While athletes require more protein than the average person, recently everyone is eating the amount of protein required for an athlete, even though they live a sedentary or non-active lifestyle. Although athletes require about 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, average individuals need 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of lean body weight. Eating too much protein is not healthy for you and can lead to gut problems. Plus, consuming excess calories, even in protein, becomes fat for storage, leading to weight gain. One of the biggest mistakes I see in my clinic is that people multiply their body weight by 1.5 when deciding how much protein they should consume. This calculation works for athletes because their body fat percentage is negligible, but it doesn't work for an individual with 50% body fat. For example, an athlete who weighs 70 kilograms should eat about 77 to 105 grams of protein per day. A non-athlete who weighs 100 kilograms should eat about 70 grams of protein daily to maintain their health. If they try to use the same formula used for athletes and multiply their body weight of 100 kilograms by 1.5, it would suggest that they should eat 150 grams of protein, which is excessive. This is too much for someone who is not engaging in high performance exercises. Here's how to calculate your needs if you are not an athlete. Take your lean body mass, which is usually between 40 and 70 kilograms, and multiply that number by 0.8. This is how much protein your body needs. Here, we discuss how excess protein intake may negatively affect your gut. As you know, most protein digestion occurs in the small intestine by the pancreas and the release of digestive enzymes such as peptidases that break down protein into amino acids. A high protein diet can alter the microbiome and produce harmful metabolites. Excess protein escapes digestion and ends up in your colon where it undergoes putrefication by the gut microbiome. This process leads to the formation of harmful metabolites such as ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, and nitric oxide. Hydrogen sulfide breaks down the protective mucus layer and increases cytokine production, which is an inflammatory cytokine. Nitric oxide damages the gut mucosa by degrading cell membranes, creating loose junctions in the gut mucosa cells and causing DNA damage that can lead to GI cancers. Ammonia blocks the uptake of short-chain fatty acids such as butyrate, damages the protective layer, increases the number of lymphocytes in the gut, and that causes a leaky gut. This is why it is recommended that people with diseases such as ulcerative colitis and inflammatory colon condition eat less sulfur-producing amino acids. Plants typically contain lower levels of sulfur-producing amino acids than animal sources.